For the first time in history of space exploration, researchers have efficiently grown plants in lunar soil from free Apollo missions, more than 50 years after astronauts carried the last moon rock samples to Earth. All of the moon soil plants slowly grew in poorly, but those cultivated in samples that had been uncovered to more sunlight on the lunar surface fared the worst, and genetic analysis revealed stress-related modifications. The lack of growth is concerning because, as NASA prepares to send men back to the moon with the Artemis program and eventually to Mars, the ability to grow food in alien soil during long journeys will become more vital. Watch till the end, as in this video, we'll show you how scientists grow first plant in moon soil. In a recent news conference, Robert Furl, a professor of horticultural sciences at the University of Florida, said that the capacity to carry plants effectively with us to the moon is how we'll grow our own food and stay there for a while without replenishment. According to him, growing plants on the moon could also have additional benefits, such as purifying the air, eliminating carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, and creating clean water. The researchers used regolith samples acquired during Apollo 11, 12, and 17 missions between 1969 and 1972 for this investigation. They cultivated a common lab specimen called Thalecress in each of the three samples. For comparison, the scientists grew the Thalecress in a form of soil derived from volcanic ashes found on Earth, known as NASA JSC 1A, which is granular and full of abrasive glass fragments and was designed to replicate lunar soil, which is powdery and full of abrasive glass shards. The shards are actually quite sharp and angular. There are also pieces of metallic iron in the lunar soil, and the glass fragments trap pockets of gases that volcanic ash can't perfectly mimic. In all three samples, the researchers were able to cultivate Arabidopsis, which is nothing but the Thalecress. The plants fared the worst in the Apollo 11 soil, which was the most mature, meaning it had been exposed to the moon's surface the longest. The moon's surface is striked by meteorites, atom fragments known as cosmic rays, and the continual stream of charged particles that pours off the sun since it lacks Earth's shielding atmosphere. Even then, the plants grew better in the Apollo 12 sample, which was younger, and the Apollo 17 sample, which was older. Plants growing in lab-created volcanic ash grew significantly faster and larger than those grown in lunar soils. Furthermore, a genomic examination of the plants found that those cultivated in lunar soil produced many genes related to salt, metal-associated, and oxidative stress, compared to those growing in volcanic ash. Changes in 465 genes were expressed in the Apollo 11 plants, while 265 genes were expressed at varying rates in the Apollo 12 plants and 113 genes were expressed in the Apollo 17 plants. The majority of these changes were brought on by stress. When they classified the plants by morphology, they discovered that the plants that seemed the poorest, small, and reddish-black in color also had the most stress-related genetic modifications. The research shows that soil that is more uncovered to the lunar surface is less healthy for plants, which could be due to alterations brought on by cosmic rays and the solar wind. If this is correct, the researchers say, dirt from the moon's younger regions may be more effective in growing healthy plants. Even if the healthiest of these plants were stunted and slow-growing, the food they produced would not necessarily be toxic and could be nutritious. Many dark-colored fruits and vegetables, such as cranberries and blueberries, are prized for the antioxidants they release in reaction to oxidative stress. According to a horticulture expert Annalisa Paul, eating plants cultivated in lunar soil is likely not to pose any hazard to people. It's difficult to say but it's more likely that the compounds produced by plants in response to stress are also helpful to humans. She believes that more research is needed to see how the lunar soil affects the nutritional value and quality of food cultivated there. Despite certain similarities, the scientists say their research shows that synthetic lunar soil isn't a good substitute for the actual thing in an experiment like this. Growing plants in lunar soil irreversibly alters its chemistry, which is why, according to Paul, an experiment like this has never been done before with the Apollo samples, which are unique natural treasures in itself. The exact chemistry of lunar soil, on the other hand, is unique and can give scientists information that replicated soil cannot. Don't you think this will be quite interesting to watch? Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments section below. I want to know what is going in your mind after watching this. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching guys. Looking for more intriguing contents? Well, click on this video to get your mind blown.